Hi everybody. Guess who your mystery reader is today? It's Mrs. Golden from third grade. I hope you guys are doing well. I'm going to read you my favorite book. It is called Saturday and Tea Cakes by Lester Lemonak. I absolutely adore the story. I love the pictures in here. I love the narrative that he tells and that it's from his childhood. And it's something that he remembers with wonderful fond memories. I hope you guys are taking some time to make some memories with your family. All right, so Saturday and Tea Cakes, starring Les written by Lester Lemack. Excuse me. When I was nine or 10 years old, I couldn't wait for Saturdays. Every Saturday I got up early, dressed and rolled my bicycle out of the garage. <clears throat> Every Saturday, I coasted down our long, steep drive, slowing only enough to make the turn onto Thompson Street, then left onto Bells Mill Road. Pedal, 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 past Mrs. Cofield's house. Pedal, 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 around the horse's pasture and up the hill past the cemetery where my grandfather was buried. Pedal, 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 past Miss Grace Owen's house and up to Chandler's Phillips 66. <clears throat> Every Saturday, I coasted over the black hose by the gas pumps just to make the bells ring. Then I dropped my kickstand and checked the air in my tires. I stopped at Chandler's for another reason too. That's where I crossed the highway that ran through the center of our town. My mother always said, you stop and look both ways when you get to Chandler's. I don't care if the light is green. I'll hear about it if you don't. And I knew she would too. In our little town, everyone knew everybody and told everything to anyone who would listen. So I always looked both ways. Pedal, pedal, pedal across Ross Street then left for a slow coast down behind the bank of Heflin, where I turned right onto Bedwell, and whoosh, I zoomed downhill as fast as I dared. Pedal, 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 up the next hill and left onto Almond Street. It was a long stretch to Mr. White's. I always stopped there to catch my breath in the shade of an old oak tree. One more small hill, pedal, 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 and then right onto Gaither Street. Now I could see my grandma's drive. One, two, three, four driveways, and one last turn to the left. This is where my tires gave up the humming on the pavement and began the crunching of gravel. Just before reaching my mouse, back porch, I slammed on my brakes, sending a shower of tiny pebbles into her flowers. Every Saturday, my mom was there sitting in her old metal glider, crick, crack, crick, crack, sipping a cup of red diamond coffee and waiting. She was waiting for me, no one else, just me. Every Saturday, my mom called out, come on into this house, let's have us a bite to eat. In my mom's big kitchen, sunlight poured through the windows like a waterfall that spilled over the countertops. Pulling up on the checkerboard floor, every Saturday, she had hot biscuits, sweet butter, and golden eagle syrup waiting on the kitchen table. Every Saturday, she poured a little coffee in my cup and filled the rest with milk with two spoonfuls of sugar. Then before long, my mom said, we best clean these dishes away and get that yard before it gets too hot. I followed her out back of the porch. Just let me put a little water on these ferns, she said. You go on ahead to the car house. That's what my mom calls the garage. I'll be out directly. By the time I pulled the old lawnmower from the garage, 
Mau Mau was already in the garden picking plump ripe tomatoes for our lunch. Every Saturday, I pulled the starter rope again and again while the mower sputtered and spit. Finally, that old mower started and I struggled to push it through the dew-wet grass, leaving row after row of fresh stripes of the, on the lawn. From time to time, the mower choked on a mountain, mouthful of wet grass that clung to the blades and to my bare legs. But by early afternoon, the dew pearls was gone. The grass was mowed and dry, and I was soaked with sweat. Every Saturday, I pushed the mower back into the garage, trudging to the back porch and flopping on that old glider. Great crack. Great crack. My mouth soon appeared with a tall glass of sweet iced tea. You just cool off and rest a spell. I'm going to make us a bite to eat. Before long, she came back with two big tomato sandwich on hamburger buns. Every Saturday, I gobbled mine down like a hungry dog, but she nibbled at hers like a bird. Now them some good tomatoes, she said. I know how you like a good tomato sandwich. Don't they taste a whole heap better when they're just picked them? We sat there a while listening to the calls of the Blue Jays and the rhythm of that old glider. Then my mouth looked at me, sort of sideways, and said, I reckon I know a boy who'd like something sweet to eat. And I grinned, yes, ma'am, I reckon you do. Come on, then, my mouth said, heading toward the door. Let's go in this kitchen and see if we can make us a mess. Every Saturday, she spread a cloth over the red countertop and scatter a fistful of flour across it, sending a cloud into the air. Then she set out a big bowl. Mau Mouse dipped a china teacup into the canister of flour, scooped up out a cupful, and skimmed over the top with her finger. Then she dumped the flour into the bowl and added sugar from her black cookie jar. She let the mixture drift through her hands like sifted sand at the beach. And then it, when it felt right, my mouth said, Look in that frigid air. <laughs> That's what she calls a refrigerator. And find me two sticks of blue bonnet. I pulled open the refrigerator and got out the margarine. I unwrapped the sticks and dropped them into the bowl. I mixed and mashed and mixed and mashed until the ingredients disappeared into a paste. It was smooth and pale yellow and smelt like fresh cotton candy at the county fair. Mau Mau pinched off a little taste. I expect we need a bit more sugar in this. She sprinkled some sugar until the dough tasted just the way she thought it ought to. Now get me three eggs, she said. I tapped the first egg too hard, making it splatter on the counter and down the outside of the bowl. I reckon we call that half an egg. My mouth said, here, let me show you how to do it. Just tap them easy like and pull the shell apart over the bowl like this. Now you do the next one. It was hard work blending those eggs into the mix with a long wooden spoon. My mouth pinched another taste. My goodness, buddy, we didn't put no vanilla in here. Reaching up in that cabinet and getting me down a bottle of vanilla flavor. When the dough tasted just right, Mama rolled it out into the flour dusted cloth. Then I cut out the tea cakes with the rim of an old tin can. We carefully lifted the circles onto a cookie sheet and put them in the oven to bake 375 degrees for 15 minutes. Isn't it fun to bake with your family? Those 15 minutes seem to last forever. And are they ready, Mau Mau? Not yet, buddy. Are they ready now, Mau Mau? Not yet, buddy. Let's give them a little bit longer. Are they ready yet, Mau Mau? I reckon they might be. She opened the oven door and the kitchen filled with a smell sweeter than the summer gardenias. The smell of tea cakes. Every Saturday, I reach for one still steaming on the baking sheet. You better wait, buddy. They ain't gonna be mighty hot just yet. Great memories. We waited until the tea cakes were cool enough to lift them from the baking sheet. 
Then we set them off on a plate. Every Saturday I ate one and then another. And I look at my mom. Is that all you want, buddy? You be sure and eat all you want. We made them tea cakes just for you. When I had eaten all I could, she set a few off on a saucer for herself and put the rest on a big sheet of aluminum foil. She folded the edges into a little handle at the top. Now you put these out there in your bicycle basket so you won't forget them. Every Saturday as I pedaled over the gravel again and out Mau Mau's drive, I glanced back over my shoulder. Every Saturday, Mau Mau was there sitting in her old metal glider and waving. She was waving to me. No one else, just me. Don't worry, Mau Mau. I'll never forget. Sometimes we just need to take a moment and remember those wonderful memories we make with our family. I love you guys. Y'all have a great day. And I've been thrilled to be your mystery reader today. Have a good one.